my YouTube channel, I am Canna Campbell. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure you do because I love creating lots of fun content for you, which I publish every Thursday afternoon. And I'm covering uh, capsule wardrobe fashion, minimalism, motherhood, and of course, personal finances. I'm a financial planner. Now today's video I want to talk to you about mental health. In particular the things that really helped me I guess not get postnatal depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome triggers again. I've always been very open and honest with you about my mental health journey and when I had Rocco I got really sick. I got to a really dark scary place where I actually ended up in hospital for a period of time and in that hospital I met other women who were going through similar struggles that I was going through and it's funny postnatal depression does not discriminate. These women came from all different cultures and backgrounds and you know, one was a lawyer, one was a graphic designer, one was a stay-at-home mother like it's just we all but we all were having very similar struggles. Now I've obviously gone on to have my third child since having Rocco and each time I've had a child <laughs> uh, my mental health has had a different set of challenges but I've definitely protected myself from getting into that deep dark frightening headspace that I did when I got there originally. So for this video I wanted to share with you the five things that really made a big difference. Helped me make me strong, helped me make resilient and when I had those scary moments or those dark days I was able to spring out of it with more resilience, more strength and more insight as to who I am and what's important to me and why it's important to, to be able to pull through the other side no matter how frightened and scared you might be when it comes to your mental health. So whilst I'm talking about in particular postnatal depression this video is for anyone who's had any challenges with their own mental health. Now, I'd like to point out I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just sharing with you personal things that really helped me and it is incredibly important that if you are having a bit of a rough time it is important that you reach out and get professional advice because whilst these things may help they will be far more powerful and helpful with professional support around you and there's nothing wrong with asking and putting your hand up and getting help and it's something I have done most definitely in the past and will always do. And the other thing I want to point out before I share these five tips with you and that is when I look back and I be really honest with myself and I look about where I've been and where I am today I don't regret or begrudge or I'm ashamed of what I went through because huge transformation and growth came from those dark times. I learned so much about myself. I grew as a person, I became far more aware, far more sensitive and I feel like I have an insight or an experience or I guess an inner power to pick up other people's problems that they may be facing. So if I suspect someone's got something going on I feel like I can pick a kid up intuitively and say hey are you okay I'm sensing this or that about you and more often than not I'm right. Alright so the first and the biggest thing that helped me with my headspace and that has been sleep. Now I know this sounds obvious but there's some particular things about sleep. The first thing is is going to bed as early as possible. Like I go to bed between 8.30 and 9. Now there's some science behind this reason. We get the most restorative restful sleep in the first few hours of sleeping. So the earlier you can go to bed the more likely you are to get some quality deep restorative sleep under your belt before you know you toss and turn which is typically between sort of for most people between like one and three. So if you are struggling with your headspace I highly recommend try and go to bed as early as possible and this is a great tip for mothers with young children that wake up throughout the night. You'll wake up in the morning not as tired. The other thing with sleep is trying to go to bed at the same time each night. This is not great for your social life on the weekends because it means you're falling asleep at the table in a restaurant or when you're out with friends but if you can try and go to bed at the same time most nights it will make a huge difference to the quality of your sleep and of course trying to avoid alcohol and trying to avoid coffees any sort of stimulants before going to bed is going to make a big difference and of course the obvious one getting off our screens. Now there are other couple of tips I want to quickly share with you within this tip about getting a good night's sleep is I process the day before I go to bed. This was a tip that one of my girlfriends 
Gaby who sleeps like a log and always sleeps like nine hours unbroken. And she said she processes the day before she goes to bed. So she thinks about all the things that happen during the day and make sure she addresses any of those things that annoyed her or upset her or disturbed her so that when she goes to bed, she's cleared the decks, she's sorted everything out and she can then switch off and properly relax. And I found this to be incredibly helpful because when I don't do this, that's when I wake up at 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. tossing and turning, getting angry at myself, frustrated, upset, disturbed, you know, heartbroken, whatever it may be that of something that happened the previous day and I, it drives me nuts. And then the other final tip for within the tip of sleep and that is giving myself permission to get a great night sleep. I found myself getting into a self-sabotaging pattern with sleep. I would go to bed knowing and thinking, well, I'm gonna be awake between one and four. And it was a really like negative mindset to have in approaching bedtime. So I learned to say to myself, all right, we're in bed, relax. I've got all the things I need. I've got my water near me. I've got my favorite pillow. The room is the right temperature. It's nice and dark. I now give myself permission to have a great night sleep. And there was something like a, something like almost like a passage that I was going through in allowing, you know, an act of self love to allow myself to have a great night's sleep. Incredibly powerful. So try these things for yourself and let me know how they help or improve maybe your own headspace. Number two, and this is affirmations. Quite often I can get, and this is really in the past, I'd really beat myself up and almost made fun of myself and said negative things to myself when I got things wrong, particularly as a mother. I'd be like, oh, I'm failing at this, or I'm doing a crap job, or I'm messing up my children, or my children are gonna end up hating me. That serves no good whatsoever. So whenever I catch myself or whenever I'm say, you know, brushing my teeth or in the shower, I try and just run a couple of positive affirmations for myself. Like, and I say to myself, Kanna, you're doing a great job. Kanna, you really love your children. Kanna, you are trying your best. Kanna, you are doing the best you can when you can. Just little positive affirmations here and there. I don't like consciously look in the mirror and say these things to myself. I just try and, or even in the car, I'll just try and say every now and again, some nice, caring, soothing, but empowering things to myself. So I know that, you know, I'm doing the best I can do because we that's what we all are. And that is good enough. I'm good enough. And so are you. All right, the third thing, and this was a really, really helpful thing. So I'm really excited to share this tip with you. And that is finding funny reels on social media of mum life. Funny reels where mums are covered in vomit, funny reels where mums are doing piles of laundry, funny reels of mums, you know, like lying to their kids to get a moment of break. Whenever I would find these funny, like real life, mum hack, you know, keeping it funny reels. It was huge help in, in with my mental health. I realized number one, I'm not alone. I realized number two, it isn't so bad. Number three, I realized you can make light of the funny side. And it's funny, I've actually gone on to, on my Canna Campbell official Instagram account, which is my lifestyle account. I've gone on to create my own content where I've shown with people how I'm coping as a mother, laughing my way at the really crappy, sh like if I can swear on YouTube, shitty times where I've actually been really down, but I've managed to see that the funny side, the light side and see the humor in all. And when you laugh, it really diffuses a lot of the darkness. So this has been a huge help. Now I will list in the video description box below some of my favorite funny mums to follow. And these mums not only create funny content, they also create real life content where, you know, they, you know, kind of, break down all those ridiculous expectations that are put on mothers these days and really not only humor you but also really empower you and this has been a massive helping hand in dealing with my own I guess dark days. The fourth thing in really helping me with bad days and that has been eating healthy. I know this sounds really really obvious but my go-to is sugar. I feel down, I'll eat a cookie. I feel flat, I'll eat some chocolate. I feel like I need some self love, I'll go and buy chocolate dipped snakes or chocolate dipped strawberries. And while some of that is perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel great about myself 20 minutes after eating all that stuff. And I tend to really binge. I don't just have like one biscuit, I'll have like a packet of biscuits. I have found that when I eat something really healthy first, so I'll eat say a carrot with some hummus or 
I'll go and make myself a, a nice yogurt dish with fresh fruit. I find that I feel so much better about myself. I feel eating clean really does improve my headspace. And I still might go and get that biscuit, but when I've filled myself up first with high vibration food, and I know that might say it sound a bit like kumbaya for some people, and I'm sorry about that, but it, it makes a big difference. And then I don't need to eat as much chocolate or as many biscuits, I only need one because I've filled myself up with food that's really clean, that feels good, and I actually feel proud about myself consuming that type of quality food, in particular vegetables and fruit. And then the fifth and final thing that's really helped when it comes to avoiding those dark days is calling them out. So whenever I've had a day where I felt really flat, like I've got myself into a scary headspace and I, I've is to quickly identify it and call someone. So for me, I'll call one of my best friends or I'll call Tom and I'll say like, honey, I've just, I don't feel good today or I like, and I just talk it through and having someone to bounce that off and just, just to, to talk about it is to identify it, but it also I release it. And to hear that I'm, it's okay to feel like that. There's nothing wrong. It's perfectly natural. And we're not supposed to feel amazing and great and incredible every single day. Those bad days, those dark days, those flat days allow us to then appreciate the great days. And this has been really big. So having someone that you know that you can trust, that you can rely on, you know there's gonna, they're gonna take your call or if they can't take your call, they're gonna message you back or call you back is really helpful. And I, whilst I wouldn't say I've been clear of postnatal depression, I, I, I've had bad days. They've only been bad days or bad hours. I've woken up the next day and I'm fine again. I've been able to recalibrate myself, reset and recharge myself. So these things have been unbelievable. These five things have been incredibly powerful in helping me grow as a person, keep a good finger on my pulse with my mental health and have really have avoided me slipping back to that extent that I got with Rocco. Now, I wanna end this video with letting you know if you're having a bad time, please feel free to reach out and connect. I've had people DM me on Instagram through my personal Instagram account, and I've been able to speak to those people and help those people and give them a couple of tips and tricks. So if you don't have someone, please know that I'm here to help you. And of course, I can't call everyone, but please know that I have been through such a frightening, scary place, and what really, the, and this is why I'm so incredibly open and honest about my mental health is when I was sick and I was really sick, I really wanted to find someone who had gone through what I had gone through and come out the other side. And because at that time, no one really spoke about mental health and depression and postnatal depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome. There wasn't anyone there. So I said to myself, if I get through this, I want to make sure that I'm loud, I'm proud and I'm open for people to help them get through because I feel like that will help you if you're going through a dark time. You can get through and not only can you get through, you'll get through and come out a better person, a stronger person, a far more resilient person and a far more insightful person, which I think is incredibly powerful. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please reach out for help and make sure you are subscribed to my channel and let me know what you think about this and if you want more content like this. Ciao for now.